This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, miniatures and paints, discount prices at MiniatureMarket.com. Hey guys, it's Steph and I'm taking over Tuesday. Rob gave me his channel and I am taking it. And today I want to talk about a con that I just got to come back from called Tennessee Game Days. It's a local con for me. I don't know, maybe four or five hundred people, but because of the virus going on, it was a little, it seemed less busy than last year. But even still, I got to play a ton of great games, and I took home about 50 games. So I am excited to play all my new games, And but I wanted to talk about uh, the experiences I got to have. So there's a big play to win section, so I got to play a bunch of games in there and teach some games in there. But um, overall, I wanted to just talk about some of the best experiences that I had. So the first thing I want to mention is Warehouse 13, the board game. I got to play that with Michael and Charlotte and Mark. And we took on, you know, the roles of the agents from Warehouse 13, if you've seen the show. And Michael is the designer, and he showed us the expansion. So... Charlotte and Mark hadn't played before at all, but I was interested in learning the new expansion. So the new expansion adds in a bunch of characters. I really just wanted to be H.G. Wells, so that was exciting. Except for the card that made me switch roles with Charlotte, so then I ended up being Artie. It was all craziness, and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I was like, really? I just wanted to play H.G. Wells. Uh, but it was a good time, and the stories... All right, well, well, I will remember that game forever. I mean, we did so well as a group, and... If you don't know, it is a hidden trader game, so one of us was a trader. I don't like being the traders, too much pressure. So I was fortunate when I revealed that I was a loyal agent because I wouldn't enjoy being the hidden trader anyway. Um, but I could feel like sneaky vibes coming from Mark on the other side of the table. And indeed, he was the trader, but it was after we already gained three artifacts as a group. And we managed to miss the final encounter and he threw all these things at us and then we ended up losing as a group it was it we could have won but so many things just got rolled wrong and it, it with the perfect storm we could have uh, actually come out ahead but it was it was a losing battle going into that final um <laughs> round if you will but it was a lot of fun and you know it's exciting to see the progression of this expansion and hopefully that will hit Kickstarter soon because I'm excited just to you know have that produced and have HG Wells as a permanent character for Warehouse 13, the board game. Um, other cool experiences, I got to try a game called SpyCon. Now this is actually a new game from Hobby World International and they are taking like a spall, spy ball kind of theme, but it's like almost like code names in a way because one person on one of the two teams will be giving clues by talking, but they don't want to be too obvious because then the other team might guess first because they will get first dibs, but they want to give clues towards the uh, so there's an item fat, there's an item, and then there's a character, and so. The teams are trying to guess the characters, and my team will know the the item that I have. So if I reveal a shovel and, like, Abraham Lincoln, well, my team will know what the shovel is, but they won't know what Abraham Lincoln is. And, and they will try and guess, the other team will try and guess the character, Abraham Lincoln, depending on what I'm saying. So I don't want to be, like, too obvious, show it in a theater, that kind of thing. I would want to be, like... Yeah, this item was around during the time, you know, his time. Um, so that it's, you're trying to be cryptic without giving too much away, and it's really, really challenging. At one point, I was giving clues in this game, and I had to be the object, and my teammate knew who the character was. There's different events that happened, so I actually had to be the object. It was so bizarre and really, really difficult, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Um, and so we played several rounds of this. I and um, I think everybody enjoyed the experience. There, there, you have to be a lot more creative and really think outside the box. And the artwork is amazing. Like I, ha I can't tell you how great this artwork is. It is 
charming and just funny, belly laugh funny. I showed the pictures to James, who's on my team, and he was just like, <laughs> actually, I'll show you a picture of James. He looks like the Santa Claus guy, and I have what, a picture of him, so you'll see that. Um, but it, it's just, it's so cool. I mean, this is a definitely a party game, and you want to, I don't like being the one um, on the hot seat, because it's just, it's hard for me to think of things and, and especially when I had to be the object and they were just going to guess the object I'm like I was Little Red and a guitar I'm like Into the Woods of course my teammates didn't know that Into the Woods was a musical and that you know it, I referred to that and I also had something I said something about picking flowers like a pick like you pick the guitar they were not on the same wavelength as me at all nobody ended up guessing it so it was just like a failure. That was a big failure that time. <laughs> but it, you know, it was, it was still fun and um, I'm glad we got to play it. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, a new Stronghold game that's called Aftershock. Now this is by Alan R. Moon and Bobby West. Uh, Alan R. Moon did Ticket to Ride and if, if you look at the Aftershock board you'll immediately see the resemblance to Ticket to Ride. You'll see pathways connecting different islands and different locations, but this is actually more of a area control game where you are basically, you're dealt cards, you can buy the cards, and then you're going to have auction off your cards that you didn't take. So the cards that you take, you're definitely going to have. The cards you chose not to take, you'll put out in front of you. Going around in a circle, everybody can choose to buy the different cards from other people. These cards will give you uh, meeples on different locations on the map, but it might also give you aftershock cards, which will help, like, choose an area and then s disperse meeples, if you will. So these these aftershock tokens will allow you to have more control over the territories, if you will. So if I have an aftershock token and I'm just a few guys short of winning a majority in an area, I might want to aftershock that location and then send off, you know, Michael's character and Eric's character uh, so that I will have majority, that kind of thing. So these aftershocks help you gain that control that you might need. Um, but when, when there is an aftershock, you're also going to need bridges. So there's bridge cards. Bridge cards allow you to have connections from areas to other areas. And then it, that allows your meeples to escape to another area if there is an aftershock. So if I do send Michael's character away, if he doesn't have a bridge to cross, it has to just go back to his personal supply. But if he has a bridge to cross, he can then move to another location. Therefore, that location is now in trouble of losing, you know, majority or gaining majority for Michael in that case. So there's a lot of moving things happening. It's very simple. It plays out very quickly. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of fun choices. Now, at the end of each round, there's going to be a scoring. And everybody will choose four locations, including bridges. If you have a lot of bridges on the board, every piece will count up. And then whoever has the most bridge pieces will gain nine, six, four, whatever the, the, the scoring is, depending on what place you're in. So if you, have a lot of if you have a lot of bridges, you might vote for that to score. Now, the key is everything has to have two scoring in order for it to score except like one location which automatically has a plus one but that's a separate section most areas will need two people to vote for it in order for it to score so you don't want to have total domination on an area people won't vote for it to score so it's a balancing act of what can you maintain what will people vote for because you want to score points well, most of the game, I was scoring second place for a lot of regions, and that actually ended up winning me the game because uh, I was just taking the second point places for a lot of different areas. Now, if Michael was controlling four areas, I'd vote for like one area and maybe three other areas where Eric was controlled. It depends on what kind of points were being given for the different locations. So it's, a, it's pretty interesting to see what will happen. Um, so I, I really enjoyed Aftershock, and we'll look forward to playing that one again. Ooh, a game I got to play in the Play to Win section, which I've been looking at, you know, for a while now, is called Campy Creatures. Now this is from Keymaster Games, and, you know, I, I wasn't quite sure what kind of game it is, so I was delighted to find out that it is a simul simultaneous action selection. 
Um, there will be cards on display, and you will basically everybody will be placing a card face down, and then you'll reveal the highest card will get to take first. And you're trying to collect these different points depending on who they can scare. Um, and if you run into a hunter, you might lose points, that kind of thing. So you're trying to maintain your hand of cards and figure out what the other players might take because everybody has the same cards in hand. There's a tie breaking mechanic that if I win the tie, then my pawn goes to the bottom most, so I won't win the tie next time. So that's an ongoing rotation. So if we all played our eight, whoever was on top of the tiebreaker will get first dibs. Now the cards range from zero to eight, and they all have different abilities, so I might affect the player to my right or the player to my left, these different things. So you need to figure out what other people are going to play, you know, look at what's available, and try and take what you can in order to gain points. And after three different rounds, you will... You see who has the most points at the end of the game. It's very simple, very fast, uh, filler game, and I love the art. The artwork is phenomenal. Keymaster Games never lets down with the, that artwork that they have. It's really, it's a really pretty cool game, and one hopefully I can add to the collection soon. What else did I play? Oh, upon Charlotte's request, I told her I would teach her Gigopolis. Now. If you know me at all, Gigopolis is my number one game. It is the game I've been talking about since I first played it years and years and years ago. I think eight years ago now. And I've loved it ever since. And many of you heard there's a reprint that was announced, so that's exciting. Um, but on Charlotte's bucket list was to play Gigopolis with Steph. How could I turn down that? I mean, if it's on your bucket list, <laughs> you're putting all this pressure on me, right? So um, we got to play that. I taught her and Mark, and I proceeded to double their score. However, they did both really enjoy it, so that means I probably did a good job teaching. I was trying to separate the teaching into sections as I normally do because it's hard to take in all of the rules of Gengoblis from the beginning. The area control doesn't make sense until mid-game when you start seeing the, how the board is forming as you're playing. And so that's when I generally explain that the area control mechanic at the end of the game. And so I think that worked out pretty well. And, you know, by the end, they were understanding the game totally. So hopefully they will go out and pick that up when it's available again. I mean, it is the best after all. How can you go wrong? <laughs> um, one game I've been trying to get played since the Star Wars movie came out is called Carcassonne Star Wars. I figured Michael would really appreciate this game. I thought Susan and James would really like it for the theme, for anything. So I wanted to show them all this game. It is one that I truly love. I, It's probably my favorite Carcassonne game because there's dice rolling and there's battles and there's different strategies you're taking to try and take over the different planets. Now, everybody at the table didn't care for this mechanic at all. And I, I, it saddened me. But I think it was because James was a stormtrooper, he was losing every roll. And I mean every roll. He never gained a majority any time. And what also was interesting is that in our game, we didn't have any ties on the dice rolling. Now, if you tie with dice, you're going to get a point. So if you tie, you get a point. You tie, you get a point. There's been past games where people have tied five times in a row, and they've each gotten five points, and, and the rest of the table's like, what? We're going to lose so bad. I mean, <laughs> but then we did nobody tied at all in this game. So it was just, it was a weird game, and, you know, every, you know James was especially excited for it to end. And, but um, Susan absolutely killed us, so hopefully Susan at least liked it. Maybe she'll play it again with me someday. But it's still staying on my shelf because I love it, and no matter what they say, I still love it. I want to play it. So hopefully that will hit tables whenever there's a new Star Wars movie. <laughs> um, there's a couple more games I wanted to discuss. Um, the first day, the first night of the con, I got to learn Eldritch Horror, and that was exciting. Um, I played Arkham Horror. That was actually my gateway game, Arkham Horror, and then I ended up hating cooperative games after that for, like, the longest time. But, you know, since then, I've come to enjoy um, cooperative games, so I've wanted to try Eldritch Horror. It's on so many people's top favorite games list, so, 
you know, it is a nice version, it's a nicer version of Arkham Horror. There's less to manage, and there's still the same amount of exploration and encounters and everything you're doing, and you're, it's still incredibly difficult. We only managed to get one of the three artifacts that we needed before we all just went kaputs. <laughs> I mean, there was a monster on the board that just took away six damage from everybody. No one could sustain living through that, so everybody died at the same time. Therefore, everybody died and we lost the game. Had I had more health, I would have been able to sustain that damage because I could have up to eight health, but... I just couldn't rest enough in order to get that, you know, that life that I needed. So it just didn't work out for us that time. But having played it now, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go back and try it again. And maybe it will play out, you know, better with two player. I don't know. I'm willing to try them. Um, I also got to learn uh, an oink game called Troika. Uh, so... This was one of the experiences that wasn't as pleasant, but I wanted to bring it up because I play a lot of games, and not every game is a true winner. This one, I was done with it after like a few turns into round one. Now the rest of the table did want to finish it out and play through the three rounds, but the game is basically draw a tile, reveal it, and then draft one from the, the, the face up, or just take another face down one. You can only have three face down tiles. At the end of the round, you have to have a set of three of the same number in order to score and get off the planet, if you will. It's called fuel because you need to get off the planet. If you don't have the fuel, you'll get an automatic minus one point for the round. You can't score anything. Now, if you have three of a kind, it's worth zero points, but that means you can score your other tiles. The tiles that you collect must be a run of three numbers, you know, seven, eight, nine. 11, 12, 13. Now, the points you get for these runs are dependent on the last single digit number. So a 7, 8, 9 will score 9 points, whereas an 11, 12, 13 will score 3 points. You only get to, again, you only get to score if you have your fuel, and whoever has the highest score will get 2 points for the round. Whoever's the second highest will get 1 point. It's kind of like anticlimactic, and you're only scoring very, very few points, and you play through three rounds, and you just keep going and drafting these tiles, and it's just, there's hardly any control, and there's it's really just not great. Now, the game is pretty. I like all of the, the range, the color range of tiles and numbers, but for me, it just was like, all right, is this over yet? Where is my watch? All right. <laughs> um, so it was definitely less than, less than fun for me. I ended up selling my copy, but I'm glad I got to play it, because now I know. This is why I play all the games, because now I know. Um, previously, you know, I might not have given Eldritch Horror a shot, but because I play a lot of co-ops these days, you know, it was fun to give it a shot. It, it, now I know, so I want to play it again. It's that kind of thing. Um, I got to play a bunch of my other favorites, like Feast for Odin, Magnificent, and the Hall of Mountain King. So there were a ton of games I got to play, and... So many good experiences. I, you know, I'm just happy I got to play Feast for Odin because I've been wanting to play that more and more. But, um, you know, the con was fantastic. I got to play, like, I don't know, I think it was 23 games overall. And I taught a bunch. I learned a bunch. I sold a bunch. I bought a bunch. For three days of gaming, that's not too shabby. Um, and I didn't catch the coronavirus, so that's even a plus. <laughs> or at least I don't think so. But I feel fine. So I'm going to take it as a win. And that's all, guys. I have been Steph, and I took over Tuesday. So watch for me next week. Bye. Game, and you could get this from Miniature Market, right, Grandpa? <laughs> you can get this from Miniature Market. That's right. Yeah, everything you need. Bye.